Yo, what is up, guys? So, um, in this video, I'll be discussing after the Eagles, uh, after the Commanders' big win over the Eagles, we are in the playoff hunt. So, um, here are the topics that I'll be discussing uh, for this video: playoff possibilities, um, what the Commanders need to do to get there. If I do think that they make will actually make the playoffs, and why or why not? Um, another topic: Chase Young's return. Uh, my expectations for him if he returns this weekend and for the rest of the season. And also, Taylor Heineke named the starter um, against the Texans and if he should remain the starter throughout the rest of the season. But uh, before I do that, I'd like to remind you all that if you're new to my channel, you like uh, Washington Commanders content, you like uh, European soccer content or soccer content in general because the World Cup is coming up. I'm still trying to work out um, a video for that to give you my predictions and all the brackets and all that. Um, uh, make sure to hit that sub button. Um, you all like to watch my videos, but don't hit that subscribe button. So I would greatly appreciate it if you hit that sub button. Also, give my video a thumbs up. Um, it'll help me out and it'll help the YouTube algorithm out a lot. Um, also, share this video with the friends and family. Comment because I'd like to know your thoughts. So... With that, let's go ahead and let's talk about this. So, the first story I want to talk about is um, Chase Young return. Chase's re Young return uh, to play this upcoming week. Um, I know that um, you know everyone's saying don't rush him back, don't rush him back. I am actually also one of those people who don't rush the guy back. I honestly don't have expectations for him. Unfortunately, like I said, um, in the in his rookie year, you know, made an impact, seven sacks, um, a lot of you know, forced fumbles, had a fumble recovery for a touchdown in that 49ers game, um, and then the rookie, and then the following season, him and Montez Sweat were so focused on individual goals that you know he just wasn't playing all that good. And then when they finally realized that when they started playing as a cohesive unit, he got hurt. Uh, Montez Sweat was able to strike out on his own, um, you know, has made incredible plays um, the last year and a half that he has been out. So with him back, what I'm looking for is can he learn from his past mistakes? Um, can he play as a cohesive unit with Montez Sweat? We saw that. Jamie Smith Williams was able to do it. Um, Casey Tuhill was able to do it. So uh, Shaka Tony was able to do it with Montez Sweat. So um, he needs to, you know, ho hopefully he was able to sit down and watch and see his teammates play as a team. It's not about, there's no I in team. So it's not all about me, me, me. I want to get sacks. I want to break records. No, it's all about the team. You got to make this team succeed. Um, but uh, let's see if he can make an impact. If he, you know, let's see if he can make an impact off of his return. Um, I'm gonna predict he's gonna have some pressures. I feel like he's gonna have some pressures. I will say he will at least force one fumble and have maybe two sacks, but he's gonna have a lot of pressures, and then Montez Sweat is gonna get home. So the you know those are my predictions for Chase Young. Um, I don't rush him back. Be have him on a. I, I I highly suggest you have him on a snap count. Um, from what I hear is that he's still braced up, so he may still move a little slow. So we'll have to see what happens with him. He rumor is he will be active um, this Sunday, but we'll wait and see if that you know comes true or not. If he gets you know some some plays here, some plays there, so we'll see. Um. All right. Next topic, Taylor Heineke and Ron Rivera's press conference where he was asked, is Taylor Heineke going to be the starter? And he said, yes, he's going to be the starter for this Texans game. Carson Wentz is not ready. And here's my thoughts on that. If Taylor, I say Taylor Heineke plays the remaining three games before the bye. Taylor Heineke plays well. 
it's no question Taylor Heineke will finish out the rest of the season. If he leads the Commanders to a, um, finish the, these next three weeks with a winning streak, you got to stick with Taylor Heineke. The team plays better around him. I guarantee you that if Carson Wentz was the starter this past Monday, it wouldn't have worked out. I guarantee you the Eagles, no matter the mistakes they committed, the commanders wouldn't take advantage of them, and the commanders would have lost. So um, Taylor Heineke should be your starter from here on out unless he stinks it up. Like, say they beat the Texans. And he, they barely squeak by against the Falcons due to a Taylor Heineke mistake, and then they get beaten down by the, and they get exposed by the Giants. Then I would have said, putting Car- Carson Wentz at this point. But if he plays well, even if he loses against the Giants, the Commanders, um, if they win their two games and they lose against the Giants, I still wouldn't say bench to the Heineke. I say keep him in. I don't want to see Carson Wentz. Carson Wentz has played terrible um, uh, as a commander and ever since he left Philly. So, Taylor Heineke, he just gives that team a spark. Him and Terry McLaurin are clicking right now. Why would you take away the guy that's actually clicking with Terry McLaurin? Because Carson Wentz would be seeing ghosts. He would ignore uh, um, Terry McLaurin. And Terry McLaurin... He's having a, the season of his life right now. He's becoming a trash talker. Um, he burned Darius Slay. He burned Stephon Gilmore. Um, so he's actually playing uh, very well under with with Taylor. So why would you take away the guy that he has a strong connection with? Um, my thoughts are on that. So keep Taylor Heineke unless he stinks it up, which I don't suspect. Well, then again, you never know. I'm, I'm going to bite my tongue on that. But unless he stinks it up, and he, like I said, even if he loses to the Giants, as long as it's a close game and, he, and we don't get blown out um, before the bye, then Taylor Heineke should stay in. All right. Third and final point of this video, playoffs. And since I can't do the Sherman voice, I, I, I'm not even going to try that. The Commanders right now are the 8th seed and a half game back from being the 7th seed and in the playoffs. Wow. I honestly could, you know, look. I rewatched my um, schedule prediction video. And um, surprisingly, I had the Commanders at 5-5. Five and five. I am... The only thing, the only video that I, the only prediction I got wrong, or actually two, I got the Titans game wrong, which if Taylor Heineke, I guarantee you, if Taylor Heineke was playing in that game, um, I feel like the commanders would have actually won that game, but you know, not going back into what ifs and, and whatnot. And I said that they would lose, they would get swept by the Eagles. We split with the Eagles this year. So those are the only things that I got wrong. Everything else, spot on. So little, I didn't know that the NFC would be actually this competitive and actually this good, especially the NFC East. I expected the Commanders being at five and five. Um, they would probably, you know, because we we've been the NFC least the last few years. Now we're the NFC East, NFC beast, and the AFC beast as well. The AFC, um, AFC and NFC Easts um, conferences are actually pretty divisions are pretty good but um right now commanders are five and five so let's run down this the remaining schedule and then i'll give you my predictions on the remainder so they got the the texans and i'll, I'll talk more about this in depth in my pregame analysis video yes i'm doing pregame analysis videos i finally found a reason to do them at the beginning I didn't do them because the commanders were just so bad that I thought it was just a waste of time, but they're actually getting it done. So hats off to them, I guess. Um, but um, don't overlook the Texans. The Texans are good. They're competitive. Don't overlook them. The record. Yes, there is not that good. They're like, what? One, seven and one. They're in the 
I think they're in like the top spot for the number one pick overall. They might be tanking to get that future quarterback because they think that Davis Mills is not the guy, but still, they're playing hard. They kept the, the Eagles Thursday night game very, very close. They kept it very, very close until the very last quarter. Those the first three quarters, they played like they were determined. Um, the fourth quarter was a different story, though, but they're competitive. So don't overlook them. I have them w- winning. This game, um, I have them winning, so that'll be six and five. Um, the Falcons is another team where the a- NFC South is so bad. Even though I think Tampa Bay is going to win this division, the Falcons still have motivation to you know hang around and and do something. So it's not the Falcons from last year where they were just terrible. They're not the Falcons from the Falcons class. They're actually kind of scrappy. So. That's another team you can't overlook. Um, but I ha- if if they 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 win this game, um, seven and five right there. Um, now here's where they hit the slide. Uh, they take on the Giants uh, away from home. I don't know what shot the Giants took before the season started, but they have been unexpectedly good. Seven and two, Daniel Jones. Has brought you know has had a few comebacks this year. That he brought him about. He brought him back against the um against the Packers, against the Titans, against the what other team um the, against the Ravens. So, um, I have them um, losing this game uh, against the Giants before the bye week. Seven and six, seven and six. Then they got the bye week. They got an extra week of rest. Ron Rivera has an extra week to game plan. They come back in FedEx Field. Um, I honestly think that we're going to get swept by the Giants. I, I honestly do. So, um, we're going to get swept by the Giants. Seven and seven. Um, three games to go. The Commanders are going to be in a situation where they got to win out and get some help the remaining three of the games. Then they play the 49ers. Um, the team that right now is in the seventh seed spot, um, Jimmy Garoppolo, Christian McCaffrey, and uh, Devo Samuel, the 49ers right now. It's a it's a two team race right now for the NFC West. And no, the Rams are not a part of that conversation. It's the Seahawks. Um, sorry. Um, I- I'm sorry. I I honestly think. The uh, the commanders will lose to the 49ers um, because, you know, you know, if it was just Devo Samuel, you know, we can take Devo Samuel away. There you go. But Brandon, Brandon Ayuk is coming into his own. They got Christian McCaffrey. There's just no way that this defense can stop all those speedy weapons. They got speed. So I, I'm going to go commanders seven and eight. I honestly think that they, they will be done at this point. They're just going to play the final two games. Um, you know, with heart and determination. Um, then they got the Browns with Deshaun Watson. I honestly don't know how Deshaun Watson's gonna look. Um, I think he's gonna serve one last suspension um this week, and then he'll be back. So, um, you know, once he, you know, once we get to take a look at him, then you know, then I'll say, you know, oh yeah, I fear Deshaun Watson. But right now, I give the Commanders win here eight and eight. Week 18 against the Dallas Cowboys. Um, I feel like Dallas. I think that the Commanders set a blue. The Commanders and the Texans set a blueprint to beat the Eagles. I don't see the Eagles going 16 and one, y'all. I feel like the this loss, um, you know, served a blueprint, and it's gonna be a three way. Um, it's going to be a three-way dance for the NFC East. It's going to be between the Cowboys, Giants, and and Eagles. Now, um, I feel like the Cowboys, unless they have a big splash, and they, like I've been hearing, they they sign OBJ. Dak Prescott has actually gotten in the Cowboys' way of winning games, in my opinion. Sorry, Jason. Um, I feel like they're, they're still be you know they're going to be. Playing in, 
you know, they'll still make the playoffs, the Cowboys. But I think that this is going to be more of a seeding where they'll say, okay, if they win, they get the five seed, they beat whoever the four seed is, which in my, I think I'm going to predict the, you know, the Buccaneers, then, you know, then they get a rematch. But if they lose, they either become the six or maybe even the seven seed. And then they get, you know, the two seed, the three seed, which could either be um, Philly or oh, who is the other or Seattle. So I feel like the Cowboys will be playing for playoff seeding and the commanders will be playing, you know, not spoiler, but, you know, to knock the, the Cowboys down a peg. I honestly think that the commanders can pull an upset because with Taylor Heineke last year, if you take that 56 to 14, where it was a bunch of backups, the first game between the Cowboys and the Eagles, uh, Cowboy, Cowboys and commanders, it was 27, 20 and the uh, commanders almost came away with a, you know, almost came back in that game. So yeah. Um, I honestly think that the commanders can pull an upset if Taylor Heineke plays this game. So the commanders will finish the season nine and eight. It's not going to be enough um, to get them in the playoffs. I feel like those, um, the two losses to the giants and then the loss to the, who else? Oh, so the 49ers will cost them in the long run. So, but let me know what y'all think. Um, let me know what y'all think. If, you know, I'm still doubting, I'm sorry. I want to clock back at some, you know, people that I've been posting on Facebook. It's not that I'm, uh, I'm not a, I'm not a Cowboys fan, y'all. I'm not a troller. I'm a realist. I'm realistic. The commanders have disappointed me ever since I followed this team um, back when I was eight years old. So, you know, um, you know, Dan Snyder, though, you know, Bron Rivera has been doing a good job of telling his player to ignore the outside noise. They've been doing great so far. But I feel like it's just too much. Ron Rivera and Scott Turner are too inconsistent. Yes, they got it done against the Eagles. And I'll talk about more of this in my pregame tomorrow. But, you know, they found a way to win. You know, they, they have ways to win. But, you know, they're, it's not going to be sustainable. So, you know, and plus they're inconsistent. They have one good game here, one bad game here, one bad game here. And then it's too late. So, but... Alrighty, y'all. Um, let me know what y'all think. Um, if, like I said at the beginning, if you're new to my channel, make sure you hit that sub button. Um, hit that sub button. Give me a like. Share this video with your friends and family. Comments, so let to know your thoughts. Until then, guys, keep it real. I'll see you guys next time. Peace.